Well, it's May 31st, end of the month, and tomorrow is a new month, which means two things. One car is going on Sawn, and one car's coming off Sawn, because I've got too many cars, and it's ridiculous to tax all of them at once, because I can't drive them all at once, and I'm paying 20 or 25 pounds a month for cars that aren't going anywhere. So really, um, sensibility means I don't tax everything all year round. And that means that this car, the Alpha 145, is going to have a month off the road. I've been using it for about two months now and loving it. I've used it for as many journeys as I sensibly can. And it's been fantastic. It's really, really good. And the car just kind of gets better and better the more you use it. Same as any other car, really. They benefit from use because they don't stagnate. You sort little problems as you go along. You find other problems as they develop. Um, but it does also mean that the poor old Tomcat, over there hasn't moved in about eight weeks um sorry that light is really flickering the batteries are failing in it um and it's been gathering dust and cat footprints all this time which is a bad thing and that car dearly needs to be driven it may not look like much but it is one of the best driving cars i own it is an absolute hoot with its gas coilovers its induction kit and big exhaust it's a bit of a rude boy and it's a bit of a wolf in sheep's clothing as well because it really does drive well actually if i'm very honest i think it drives better than this one but don't tell anyone but this car will not be forgotten while it's parked up it gives me the opportunity to do things like taking this dashboard apart and finding that uh, blower uh, resistor getting out and finding the correct one so I haven't got to worry about the dashboard being in pieces for maybe a week or so while I locate the right part. If I'm driving it I can't do that so I can do that. While the dashboard is apart I'm going to get the aerial out of the roof and out of the, wherever it's routed through here because the signal on the radio is appalling. I can get half of Radio 1 which is like the strongest signal in the country and there's a few other jobs. I'm going to weld a new exhaust hanger in the middle of this thing so while this is off the road for a few weeks I'm going to take the opportunity to just go through it and sort out a few niggles and I'm sure more will present themselves while I'm working on it. So I'm going to pull the rover out, park this in its little corner and get the rover cleaned up and start enjoying it. Meanwhile, cue montage of cleaning this thing before it goes away. After a quick dust off, that is like new glass. And that, the resistance is ridiculous. It just drifts over. That just doesn't want to move at all. Awesome. Now, outside of the car, boot, spoiler, doors, bonnet, wings. A couple of hours later, it'll be lovely. It actually sounds like you're sandpapering something. It's like a gritty crunchiness at each slide across the bonnet. So this now, I've just it's almost silent. If I start again here in the middle, you can hear that. It's like rustling pages in a book or rustling newspaper or something. And then quickly, as the dirt comes out of the paint, it goes silent. Believe it or not, you can also clay bar glass and the effect is actually quite dramatic. You can hear the little bits of stuff that are embedded in the, in the screen. And I've been doing this for a couple of minutes now. And look at the little dots all over that, that stuff that was in this window. Now the question that always baffles me is polish first or wax first, wax first or polish first? The answer is polish first and then you seal it with the wax. So that's what we're going to do. Yep, this car has been here a bit too long.
Battery's still good after all this time. Six pounds from Aldi, great buy. Yep, still got clean oil. I mean, the oil is still fine, it hasn't fallen out. Let's see if this thing will actually start after so long in storage. It's in neutral. It's in neutral. Yeah, this thing always goes. Gotta love an old Rover. These things are unkillable, they're like cockroaches and the Volvos. I've forgotten the solar charger, oopsie. I'm actually quite surprised how much water or moisture has been caught in this moisture trap considering how hot it's been recently. That's a good few litres there. Oh. This car does not like speed humps. So I'm out in the Tomcat for the first time in I reckon about two months maybe. It's been a long old time since I've driven this car. But it started up first time, which is fantastic. I mean, a bit on trickle charge, that was not to be, not a surprise really. You can hear the brake disc grinding where it's been sat for so long. I really wanted to take it out for a quick blast today, just to uh, make sure it's okay. But it's been like 27 degrees, and that really calls for a car with air conditioning. I've got the, um, the roofs open. The windows are shut, obviously, otherwise you'd better be, be hear the microphone. It's ridiculously warm, it's only evening time now, so it's cooling off a bit. But yeah, a uh, nice text this morning from Alan, who you will recognise from the Rover 200 gearbox video, saying he's just got something interesting in his yard. So I thought we were going to have a quick look at that. Looking at this car now, I'm heading off. It's suffered a bit in the last couple of months. The windscreen wipers look really manky and a bit rusty. I'm going to have to do something about those. And the headlining, even though I had that moisture trap thing, the rear headlining has really dipped down badly. I mean, it was starting to sag a wee bit over kind of Christmas time, New Year, but it's looking pretty awful now. I don't know what to do about that. It's not like it's falling off the backing, it's just. I don't know, the whole thing's just, the cardboard backing itself is sagging. I think the problem is the radio aerial isn't sealing properly, so water's dripping through that and getting into the top of the headlining and making it go soggy and horrible. So I guess I'm gonna have to take the headlining out, reseal the aerial, and put a new headlining in. That'll be fun. Mm, that's really blistered up while I've been parked up the last few months. And that door started bubbling through as well. I'll have to really work on the paint very soon. As in, probably next week sometime. More show than go. Oh wow, that is awesome! These are both the same year, that's incredible to think that. They're both Eldridge. Yeah. Nearly the same colour. Yeah, but the styling on these things is just so wildly different. That's all sort of modern and curvy, and that's all kind of lead last decade. And Standard issue 90s wheel trims. Every rep this side of France had these wheel trims on their Cavalier. Not even that scuffed either. Yeah. LS 1.8, or. Oh. This 
absolutely gorgeous Cavalier will be for sale very soon. Alan's bought it, isn't really sure what to do with it, so he's probably going to flip it straight on. But look at this thing, the bodywork is just so solid. A little bit of a touch up on that rear arch. Tailgate is lovely. And this rear arch has had a bit of work, a bit of a touch up of some kind on that rear arch there yeah, as well. Yeah, just on both the rear arch. Yeah. With them. The bonnet's just got a few stone chips, but nothing much at all. Even got the original wheel trims. That is fabulous. Look at this thing. This is the best. I'm actually really quite tempted myself. I'll swap you. Yeah, what for the Tomcat? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of tempted. <laughs> so I've got some lowering springs for it in there. Have you? Like, yeah. In the boot? <laughs> yeah, I've got some just, I bought them from a Gleaver, but they're actually from Cavalier. Oh, okay. Never really sold the boots. Oh really? Quite I've never had a Vauxhall. So. Yeah. Crikey. Oh, <laughs> wow, there's a lot of spares. Yeah, so I, I've got another window in there that I was oh, right, yeah. throwing away, so but it, it runs lovely. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll work out what key does. <laughs> well, it not got all the same key. I think it does. It's... <coughs> oh wow, that is Amazing! That is a sweet little 1.8. That's amazing. I love this car. It is so smooth. That is a fabulous little car. These seats. Look at these seats. They are. Oh, yeah. The old look to the middle headrests. See, it's still a bit damp because he did uh, give him a proper sponge earlier. Fabric's barely worn at all. Steering wheel's nice. Oh, 98,000 miles. That's not much, is it? Rear fogs, headlights. This is really modern. For a 1994 car, this car looks so much more modern. Well, 93 car, sorry. Looks so much more modern than my uh, Tomcat, which looks like it's something from. 20 years previous. Haha. -ha. Oh, cup holders. That temperature gauge is clearly out because it's well over 20 degrees out. It's still boiling hot. It's kind of a shame it's got uh, an aftermarket stereo in it now. <laughs> that thing's awesome. I can just imagine what my wife would say if I came home with this instead of the Rover. Like a real Tom, oh sorry, yeah, the Tom and, the, no, Magic Beanstalk, who was the guy? Oh, God, you're asking the wrong person. No. Magic Beans, basically. <laughs> Thingy and the Magic Beans, someone put that in the comments. <laughs> Guess what, Lisa, I've got rid of the Tomcat. Yay, but even better, I've got a flat Cavalier. <laughs> I imagine the look of joy on her face. <laughs> because Rover. The old lift bar. Yeah. Cool. yeah, this That's gearbox. A a... Yeah, if I could have had that gearbox off that Metro for this. <laughs> yeah. Mind you, it wouldn't have survived very long. Yeah, that linkage is kind of floppy. But in the time I've had it, it's had a new recon head on it. Um, it's got gas lowering spring or coilovers. A new stainless pipe across exhaust. Blimey, that is a bit. Give us a proper willy down there, it'll, <laughs> it'll surprise you. Sounds quite nice, doesn't it? Sounds awesome, yeah. So me yeah, it's mechanically, it's brilliant, but it needs that gear change yeah, linkage yeah, that, sorting that out. It's terrible. It's like, awful, it's, yeah. That's like, <laughs> it's like it's missing. Something. All the all of the bushes. Yeah. Yeah. That's really. It's yeah, waggling a porridge spoon. Yeah, it sounds like it's got something a bit loose on the front as well. It needs new bushes, I think. <laughs> all right. Quick drive in the Cavalier. I don't think I've driven a Mark III Cavalier since about. Oh, when this would have been yeah, about early nineties, ninety three, ninety four. Clutch is nice. Gearbox is nice, this feels really modern. Oh, 
this is good. It's about as quick as the Rover Tomcat, but without any of the fuss and hysterics and noise and drama. Oh, this is lovely. If he wants to straight swap on this, I'm actually quite tempted. And it's got an airbag on the driver's side. Switch gear is super solid. Wow, this is just the best. I love this. Fans work nicely. Nice to, oh, as you can tell, do you know what? I've driven a few cars in the Vauxhall Heritage fleet and the Mark II Cavalier, I think is my favorite of all of them. And do you know what, this is actually probably better. If this had air conditioning on it, I'll drive it away right now. This is fabulous. I've never owned a Vauxhall. Now might be the time. Our oh, steering's nice. Oh, this is great. These seats are so comfy. This is an ordinary real car. I'm, I shouldn't say this. I'm quite tempted. Yeah, check this out. This Haynes manual came with the car and all these details about the car, notes he's made about what he's done to it. So the car's basically it's unofficial service history on a sheet of A4 paper, it's proper old boy spec, isn't it? Yeah, well, you see saying that someone's taken the time to do something like that, they yeah. obviously like their car. They've clearly it? cared for this thing. I think it goes up to 2017. Wow, it? so that change of owners at that point. And so is that from you? Uh, 1995. So two years old, so it's been a, been well, a company, rep, car, rep car, fleet car of some kind. He's bought it, X, X fleet. Tom this thing is amazing. Timing belt done in? Mm, 68k. So, it's got 84 in it now, isn't it? 82? No, 90. 90, oh, okay, hang on. Check this old school 1.8. Fuel injection overhead cam. No messing. It's not really a car you drive like you just buy as a car anymore. No. I think they lost that. It's probably only very recently they've lost that status, haven't they? So, 1993's offering from Luton, 1993's offering from Birmingham. Should I swap the Rover for the Cavalier? Answers in the comments. I like that one. I love the style, the shape, the, the more retro feel of it. But I do really like that kind of smooth ride, extreme comfort from the Cavalier. Hmm, tell me what you think in the comments. There's a genuine Rover floor mats which are really hard to find now, which I got for it. I don't want to do the swap, but you keep on telling me and trying to... I'm just it letting you know <laughs> the good bits about it. <laughs> well, that was an unexpected five minute interlude. Alan said he'd got this new car coming in, which he's probably going to get rid of because he's got too many cars like me. And I'm glad I took it for a drive because I've not realised how nice an old Mark III Cavalier is. Or oh, I'd forgotten how nice a Mark III Cavalier is. So smooth and relaxing. This car feels really retro. This feels like a car from at least a generation, maybe two generations earlier than that Vauxhall. I'd be very sad to let go of this car, but that Cavalier was lovely. But it's nice to be back in the Rover. And when I think back of every job I've done to this, there are quite a lot. It's had a new head, a new exhaust, stainless from Piper Cross, induction kit, gas coilovers, which need to be softened off a bit, really. A sound deadening speakers. Oh recolored the leather parts of the seats. Changed the steering wheel twice, once for a rubber one, once for a leather GTI one when I found that. Yeah, hmm. Then at least 
this is furious driving couldn't complain there aren't airbags in it because the Cavalier does have airbags. I wasn't going out today planning on swapping this car, but I did rather like that Cavalier. But then I also rather like the Rover as well. What I need is a Hoovy-esque hoopty headquarters where I can park yet more cars. Wow, that's not a pothole, that's like an entire valley. It doesn't help, this car looks absolutely shocking because it's been too hot to wash it today, so it's all covered in crust and dirt. It will polish up a bit nicer in the morning. That engine noise is fantastic, that kind of rule. Mind you, the gearbox, or the gear selector I should say on this is just the worst. It's absolutely atrocious. I've forgotten how terrible it is, to be honest. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little playing with cars day. Oh, it's three retros in one. That, that is value. Got the Alpha, the Rover, and a Cavalier. How good is that? Aren't I good to you? Did you like the um, slightly bloggy format? Let me know. I could do more of this kind of thing if you like. Should I swap the Rover for a Cavalier? Tell me down below. If you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe. If you enjoyed this, please hit like. If you didn't like it, tough, it's free, it's cost you nothing. Ugh, keep it to yourself. Hey, thanks for watching and uh, see you again next time.